Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Rangers Review Morning Briefing for Wednesday, the 1st of February, and I'm delighted to say it is game day as we look ahead to the match tonight at Tynecastle. Uh, I'm Derek Clark, and I'm joined this morning by the man that's going to be heading over to the capital for us, Joshua Barry. How are we doing, Joshua? Good, yeah. Sorry we're late today. It was because it was actually Johnny's fault because he called us at half past. <laughs> Derek had his finger on the, the button ready to go live, but... Um, no, lots to talk about, Derek, obviously, kind of looking back on the transfer window, but obviously a huge game tonight um, away at Tyne Castle. So, yeah, really looking forward to it. Yeah, before we talk all things, Rangers, just a quick word for our sponsor, uh, everybody. It's Seneca Hair Transplant UK or Seneca Hair Restoration, as you can see uh, on the screen there. They are the number one hair transplant corporation in Europe due to its elite hair restoration services and innovation techniques. Uh, and as uh, the, the uh, tagline goes, to date, they've treated over 43,000 hairless sufferers. So these are the guys to go to if you're thinking uh, about uh, looking at reinvigorating the top of your head. So I've stuck the, the links, as always, in the description uh, box. So do go check mm -hmm. them out, folks. Right, let's talk Rangers, Joshua. Um, well, first of all, let's talk transfers because the transfer window slammed shut at midnight, as, as the saying goes, last night. Rangers uh, acquiring two players in the form of Todd Cantwell and Nicholas Raskin, a deadline day signing from Standard Liège. Uh, there was talk uh, about uh, potentially another body coming in. That never materialised. And there was actually talk for Alex Lowry going out on loan with St Mirren, uh, believed to be interested in taking him to Paisley for the remainder of the season. However, that also didn't materialise. Um, the only one departure if I'm not mistaken, Charlie McCann heading out to Forest Green last week. Um, on the on the whole, I know you did a, a video with, with Johnny last night, uh, Joshua, yeah. in the midst of it all. Um, but those two acquisitions, in, in the main, is it a, a, are you quite pleased with the business that's been done? Yeah, I mean, I think, Derek, this window was always about, um, and we've got a piece on the website about this this morning, it was always about looking long term. It's so different to the last January when Rangers are obviously still in Europe. Little did we know how far they'd go. Um, they are still at the top of the table. And it seemed as though Giovanni uh, Van Bronckhorst had got a, a fresh wind out of this side and they just needed a couple of additions in key areas. It's very different this time around. Beal um, has spoken publicly about the need to get players who are going to be big players for Rangers in the next two to three years. And as a result of that, it had to be about quality over quantity, uh, quantity Derek. I think it's been a really good window and I think criticism of it isn't very fair because Rangers had to get the right players in. And I understand that, um, you know, Beal has, has teased more signings up until yesterday when he was saying um, that, that one or two interesting things could happen. But Cantwell and, um, and Raskin are that sweet spot of players who can be big players for the next two to three years, are exciting transfers at any time that you sign them, whether it's on a, a pre-contract, whether it's for money in the summer or in January as... It has materialised, uh, but they're ready to hit the ground running now and make that impact between now and the end of the season in the area of the pitch that Rangers really needed, which was the centre of midfield. What I can understand is when people, you know, I said in this piece, the goalkeeping position remains obviously one mistake away from hysteria, and that's natural because it's cost Rangers points. Uh, it's not a beat about the bush it has. The centre of defence is maybe a little bit light. You know, you're banking on John Suter getting back and after he's missed the first whole half of the season, I think that's a bit of a risky ploy. But at the top end of the pitch, when you look at Cholak now back fit, when you consider that Hadji's in there and Cantwell, when you consider that Lowry's still, uh, still around, where does everyone play? Lawrence is to come back as well, Derek. You've got Kent there, Tillman, Cantwell, uh, Sakala. You know where where does everyone play in that position? You've even got more forgotten men like Matondo and Wright, and I'm not saying that they're going to be first choice, but they're still on the wage bill in that position. Um, so I think overall, if you're taking those two players, I think they've got the potential to both be excellent signings um, for for different reasons, but hopefully they both fit the bill of of what Buell outlined, which is big players for Rangers over the next two to three years, and players who can be again to quote them exciting in the future, uh, but can also be exciting and, and make an impact now. Yeah, uh, so many uh, comments coming in. Let's get to a few of them. Um, uh, Derek Ratting gets in touch uh, from Perth, Australia. Good morning, lads. Uh, Raskin looks like a player. Uh, your thoughts? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Josh has done a great scouting piece on him uh, on the website. Folks, do go check it out. Uh, and and the, the YouTube uh, 
chat I had with the uh, Belgian uh, football journalist uh, yeah. Sasha uh, Tavolieri <clears throat> last week uh, when the move was edging ever closer, spoke in depth about him, what we can expect from him. Um, so I'd urge you to go and check that out as well. Um, he did sign, of course, yesterday. Um, a lot of questions asking that will he feature tonight. It's subject to his work permit being confirmed. He'll begin training uh, in the coming days. So I'd imagine uh, tonight comes too soon uh, for him to feature. However, on signing for Rangers, uh, Raskin said, I feel very excited to be here and I also feel very proud to join a very big club. I'm looking forward to playing at Ibrox. It was very exciting when I was told of Rangers' interest because it's a big club. I'm looking forward to making my debut and I hope it can be as soon as possible. Michael Beale also commented, he says, as a football club, Nicholas is a player that we've tracked for a long time and we're very pleased to welcome him and his family to Rangers. He is a young player that has already amassed good experience both in domestic and European competition. I am looking forward to working with him closely and integrating him into our team. And Ross Wilson added, uh, we are delighted to further strengthen our squad today with Nico's arrival. He's a talented young player and someone who I know will enjoy working and further developing his talent with Michael uh, and our staff. And there's an interview with him on Rangers TV as well, Joshua. Um, it certainly seems that the Michael Beale factor this certainly seems uh, uh, quite a big thing for players. We, we heard it from Todd Cantwell. Yeah, good. That Nicholas Raskin also looking forward to working with them. Um, I think I've touched on this before. That the two previous managers had that worldwide fame with, with their name and what have you, and and as appealing. However, Michael Beale, of course, never had the uh, the career that, that Steven Gerrard or Giovanni van Bronckhorst had in any way, shape, or form. But certainly, his his coaching techniques and his coaching methods seem to be uh, uh, well thought of amongst the amongst players of uh, this era. Yeah, and. And players obviously want to get better, as simple as that sounds. I think when you've got so many options, and we know that, that Raskin had a lot of options, that Rangers had to, to fight off a lot of interest to get him to Ibrox. Everything like that comes into account. And, and Cantwell said it, um, I think he said it was the biggest factor was working with a manager who gave him clarity uh, about the role that he's going to play um, on the pitch, but also he could see a pathway to develop and 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 become a, a better player and that's really important I, I think raskin has everything there we've got a scout report on him on the website um and which which includes some more detail about him if you watched last night's video if you've not already we um go through a few of his stats and, and, and graphics just to kind of give you an idea of what type of player he is for me derek is so much to his game and at 21 beal will only hopefully be able to refine that further but i think what he is is a bit of a natural risk taker he can create chances directly for teammates so aggressive off the ball um, and at times as we said last night maybe he'll need to to learn to, to keep the ball instead of always forcing the issue I think it's a better problem to have for Rangers to, to attract a player like that who is going to be able to break lines and try something different and move the ball forwards as opposed to a, a midfield profile they already have I don't think they have someone with Stephen Davis injured and obviously at that stage in his career um, at all like Raskin at the base of midfield, who has that combination of being able to go box to box, take the ball off the centre backs, uh, sit in front of the of the, of the defence, but also as Beal said when he was discussing him in his press conference, he can play a bit higher as a number eight as well. Um, I don't think he'll play tonight because I also don't think he's played for for a little while. Um, but I'm I'm sure like Cantwell, he's here to make an impact between now and the end of the season. And that'll be part of, of the reason that Rangers have paid the money to get him in now. Uh, I also think it might impact James Sands. I've seen a comment that I've lost there, Derek. But... Yeah, this, yeah uh, the MLS uh, transfer window apparently opens uh, today. Uh, so there was a question as to whether he might go back uh, to his parent club, New York City FC. Um, not entirely sure. We'll need to we'll need to get the, the gist of that from the manager. But he did touch on that, didn't he, Joshua? Yeah, sort of, yeah. you, you asked him about what if James Sands has a role to play um, I, I personally can't see where he fits in. Yeah, well, he said earlier in the press conference, he seems to like to do this, Beal, because he, he said something a couple of weeks ago about trying to strengthen in the defence, and he said later in the press conference no one took the scent or, or something along those lines. So I think he sometimes likes to leave bits of information in and see if you uh, you pick up on it. Um, he spoke about the on-loan players, and the two players on loan are Malik Tillman and James Sands, and they are... Um, in very different circumstances at the moment and have had very different Rangers careers. Um, when I asked about Sands towards the end of the answer, Beal, obviously without naming players specifically, 
but he said that um, his his office had been like a doctor's office with players wanting to come in and, and talk about their future. Um, so reading between the lines, you'd imagine that Sands, with another defensive midfielder coming in, with Sands already having not played much and Beal viewing him as a midfielder instead of a defender, will view that as another block to, to play in consistent games. Um, I, I can't see him playing much between now and the end of the season. He hasn't had many opportunities in his favoured position. I go back to that game against PSV where he was uh, excellent, and particularly away from home, and, and suited that style of football under under um, under Gio. I don't think this move has transpired well for him. I don't think he, um, I, I don't think he maybe is a profile of player that Rangers need at the base of midfield, and and you'd imagine that's one to kind of keep an eye on Derek purely because of what Bill said and just you know reading between the lines of the circumstances. Yeah, I, I can't see him. Uh, if, even if he does stay, he, he, there's, there's no chance. I don't think Rangers are going to splash out a substantial amount of money for him. But uh, I may be wrong. Who knows? Um, let's get to some of the comments uh, coming in. Alan Wright raises an interesting point here, Joshua. Morning, guys. Two good signings. Mm -hmm. Do we lack height in the team? Um, I know Raskin isn't the tallest. Uh, Catwell is uh, a decent height. But decent not, height, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's not, he's not a, a big guy. Um, do Rangers lack height, do you reckon, in, in, in their side, a bit of physicality in there? I think there's two interesting points on this, Derek. One of which is um, the, co the conversation around Ben Davies and is he dominant enough as a defender to play in Scotland? And, and we're going to have a piece on that soon that looks into that in greater detail, includes some quotes uh, of Davies speaking about that recently, that very topic recently himself, um, some stats comparing them to, to previous partners of Connor Goldson, and... Um, so that's an interesting topic because I think a lot of people have been speaking about it. On the flip side of it, Rangers' um, expected goals from, from corners has went up. They're causing a more consistent threat from set pieces. They haven't quite had the end product. Connor Goldson at Kilmarnock recently comes to mind as, as um, a header that should have found the back of the net yeah, yeah, from, from a corner. Team. But I think what you've seen Rangers do, especially is trying to use Tillman at the front post, and, and I think the goal against Tibbs in Buell's first game was a great example of this, was if Rangers put the ball into the box against, I think Hibs had three centre-halves and Ryan Porch is playing that day, they're probably going to lose it. So they have to be clever about how they do it and maybe trying to isolate Tillman and his height at the front post. And then if he wins a flick on, it's not about height in the six-yard box. It's about um, trying to get to the ball first, as Ryan Jack did. So that's a roundabout way of saying maybe, yes, at points they do. I think there's been interesting ways that they've tried to um, address that in, in an attacking sense, um, but at, at corners in particular. But the, the conversation of a more dominant centre-back, um, I, I think, is an interesting one and definitely something that we'll kind of revisit in, in, in greater detail in the, in the next few weeks, Derek. Yeah, uh, that's an interesting one. Bob says uh, Big Lafferty is a free agent, of course. That was a that yes. sort of certainly caught everyone by surprise, I think. Yesterday, he's uh, cancelled his contract at Kilmarnock by mutual consent. He does often historically come good in the second part of the season. <laughs> I say bring him home. Uh, what do you say, Joshua? He does come good, but the, the run that everyone thinks of, obviously, with the, the goals at Rugby Park was about, what, 10, 12 years ago or something like that now? Yeah. So um, maybe <laughs> maybe slightly past his peak. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I did see that. And then Johnny put a question to me about it yesterday in the in the, in the the live show. And I don't know. I don't have much to add. I've not watched much of him apart from that game <laughs> against Rangers recently. So yes, I was surprised, Derek. I would be very surprised if he rocked up as Rangers' fourth choice uh, striker in the as a free Listen, agent. I, I, I wouldn't mind him as part of the squad. I, I've got to say, I've got a lot of time for uh, Big Kyle. Um, lots of comments coming in. Jim McCarroll says, uh, "Good morning, lads. On holiday in sunny Portugal, wife understands we can't go out uh, before ten. That's absolutely right, Jim. Fantastic to hear." Um, some other comments coming in. James says, "I'm amazed how, how many Aussies are on here." Uh, right enough, James. There is a, a fair few. I was so jealous of Derek in his six-course meal. That was at the uh, Blue Sky Lounge the other day, uh, just prior to the St. Johnson game. It was uh, it was sensational. Uh, and Ross McDonald raises an interesting point. This game not being on Sky tonight is a disaster. Totally agree. Uh, it's a showcase game, uh, and the fact it's not on uh, television for people to watch uh, is an absolute travesty. But um, that's that's for another show, another debate. The whole. TV deal and what have you. You can watch it, of course, on Rangers TV if you are abroad. Uh, I know that the VPN, uh, the, the, the VPN uh, uh, option uh, is available uh, to watch Rangers TV abroad. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, I think it sh certainly should be uh, on uh, Sky this evening or 
uh, another broadcaster. It's a huge game. Let's talk about the game, uh, Joshua, because Hearts are flying at the moment under Robbie Nielsen. They sort of stumbled at the weekend, but Livingston, not an easy place to go to. Uh, it's, Rangers are going to be in for a, a tough evening tonight, although last time they went there, they uh, brushed them aside with ease, 4 0. Yeah, obviously we can't. Obviously, for for legal reasons, we can't encourage piracy, Derek. But you will be tuning in, I'm sure, tonight. To I didn't realize it wasn't on Sky Sports. No, which is not. No, you can watch yeah. it even in Hearts Hearts TV, I believe. Hearts but TV. you have to be abroad to watch it. It's, the, the, the difficulties to watch a football game it's like, it is actually unbelievable, isn't it? Um, what was the question? Four and now, yeah, that that game was a strange game because Rangers for so long going to Tyne Castle, it was like going to Hamden. That run in 2019, um, or 2020, start of 2020, and, and it probably extends back to 2019, where um, it was so hard to, to win there. And Rangers, obviously, they, they had that damaging league defeat. I think they went out the Scottish Cup as well um, at Tyne Castle. The 4 0 game was, I, I think, an example of when um, Geo's tactics away from home worked. And I don't think they often did, but. Um, Hearts were aggressive. They pushed up the pitch, and Rangers hit a couple of long diagonals over them early. Kent obviously laid on that fantastic cross for Cholak, who was kind of at the top of his his game. Then we can maybe come on to talk about him, Derek, because he was doing the, the press conference and the lead up to this game. And then Matondo on the other side again, a rare kind of moment for him where he beat his man and, and laid on uh, Cholak for a second goal. Then the red card happens, and then the game's kind of kind of gone. I think it'll be totally different tonight. It'll be interesting to see how Beal approaches it. One of the things I've liked about him going away from home, and I think that the great example of this was Kilmarnock. The pitch was holding up um, and Rangers were quite happy to kind of go over the top of their defence, which was best shown, I think, for the first goal. And Sakala makes that run in behind. Um, be interesting to see again if Hearts do go aggressive, how Rangers counteract that. Because when Buell was asked about playing with two forwards, Derek, um, he said it's sometimes about giving the opposition something to think about if they're at home which I thought was an interesting um, kind of line of thought from the manager there. Um, we both have put our predicted lineups in, which I presume are quite similar. Can't see the back four changing. The there's midfield just change, there's just, Yeah, there's just one change. It's in, I've got Jack in there. You've got Lundstrom, I think. Yeah, and, and that's purely because, I, you know, because Jack came off at the weekend and uh, Beal was wasn't definitive in saying he'd be ready um but maybe Lundstrom would, would come in from the start I know he's not in the best vein of form I think he's another player we <laughs> need to talk about at some point Derek but ahead of that I can't see many changes at all maybe Sakala comes back in for Cantwell because I think Rangers if they're going to have slightly less of the ball than they did at the weekend where they had what north of 80 percent possession in the first half then they'll want an extra goal scorer and I think Sakala gives them that nice option of being able to play out wide but also uh, play through the middle but the manager has kind of floated the idea of playing Cholak and Morelos together. I'd be surprised if he did it in this game, just because I don't know how much of a, a kind of transitional threat that gives you. Neither of those players are really going to run in behind much. I guess Morelos can at, at points. Um, yeah, I, th I, th I think it might be Sakal, though, if not just for his, his kind of goal record since Biel came back into the club. Yeah, that... I was I was in two minds as well with regards to Morelos or Cholak. Yeah, Cholak did score two goals, of course, at Tyne Castle last time out back yeah. in October. Morelos himself scored, of course, came off the bench. Um, Morelos, shooting-wise on Saturday, Joshua was uh, abysmal. Um, he should have he should have buried two chances in the first half. Uh, I know there's an argument that uh, Remy Matthews did well to to save one of them. However. Uh, as a striker, he is that, that's part of his, of his game at times. He is erratic and he's finishing. Cholak, I would have no doubt, would have uh, buried those two opportunities. Um, that's that's the thing we get with Cholak. He's not as good in terms of uh, Alfredo Morelos and with his uh, overall link up play, but you give him half a chance inside the penalty area, and, and more often than not, he's going to stick it away. So, um, is there a bit of uh, but is there a bit of a selection dilemma for Michael Beale tonight, do you reckon, or, or do you reckon he'll just stick with Morelos? It fits into what Beale said recently about <clears throat> you don't get to sign complete players in Scotland. And I think this probably shows it perfectly, Derek. Obviously, Morelos' situation is a bit unique because we know he can be that all-round player. Coincidentally, I don't think he's ever been, apart from that um, run in 2019, I think he's always tended to underperform his expected goals. And um, Saturday was a perfect example of having six shots, not all the best value chances, but a few of them you'd expect him to do a lot better with. He's not a player who I think one-on-one -on -one is is that clinical. 
Cholak finds the corners. But you're right, Rangers tried to play into Morelos 49 times at the weekend. Cholak does not play that many number of passes in the game. I think his average is 14. That might not seem important. People will say a striker's job is to put the, go, go, uh, put the ball in the back of the net. But for Rangers' second goal at the weekend, the striker's uh, job was to pull the defence out of position and create the space. I don't think it's... Um, it's binary. It's not just. It's not just one thing. Um, but but I totally agree with you, Derek. That that Cholak's and it, and it, I asked him about this um, two days ago. Whatever day it is just now. Monday, I think the press conference was. He said he wants to be the same Antonio in different situations when he was talking about working under the new manager, working in new systems. He's spoken about playing up front with Morelos and training and how they have different capabilities. But he'll still want to be number one, uh, the number one pick between now and the end of the season. I wrote a newsletter recently, I think it might have been on Monday um, or, or last um, last weekend, that effectively said Rangers have been linked with the likes of Nisbet and Shankland. And I know we've just discussed that before, Derek, but Cholak's goal return of 11 goals in just over 12 full 90 minutes is the type of return that Rangers have not had for a long time for a striker. I know Defoe did, but he's at a different stage in his career. Yep. He also significantly overperformed his expected goals and and some would say okay that's going to um level out as a result of that and, and that's true and i think we've seen that towards the end of uh, geo's reign but as well logic tells you if he is going to get more opportunities if he can rediscover that form from the early part of the season where he just needed a half chance he didn't need high quality chances to score but he was so good at, at finding the corner but he's also an option off the bench. And again, up until the last couple of weeks, we saw this in the semi-final. Beal has not had this option. He hasn't had the ability to bring a striker off the bench who can who can be a real goal threat, maybe after Morelos has tired the defence out. So it'll be intriguing to see who who starts tonight. And often when a player goes up for a press conference, Derek, you do think, does that mean that they're they're going to yep. play? So, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, it's, it's, although I think Scott Wright was put up recently and was on the bench, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, uh, true, true. for a game. So, uh, yeah, I wouldn't read too much into that, uh, everybody. But I think Antonio Cholak certainly uh, deserves an opportunity from the start at, at some point. Uh, whether it's tonight, I, I'm not so sure. I think uh, Michael Beale will uh, stick with the, 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 the tried and te tested of who he's went with for the majority of his of his time uh, since uh, arriving to take over from Giovanni van Bronckhorst. Now, let's get to a couple more uh, comments before we wrap up for the day. Uh, first of all, just going back to transfers, Neil McBain uh, says, uh, does the signing of Raskin mean Ryan Jack is on his way out in the summer? Um, it's an interesting one. He certainly provides competition in that area of the pitch. Uh, John Lundstrom, Ryan Jack and Glenn Kamara uh, have been deployed there. Um, we've touched on James Sands. I think he's out the picture. Um, however, uh, four... Uh, Michael Beal tends to like to, 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 to like to play two of those midfielders, Joshua, yeah. and um, four doesn't go into two. So uh, mm. who drops out? Who, who but he also, yeah, but he also likes a competition. And I think like most players, he wants um, two players in each, at each position or, or there or thereabouts. Just, just I was remembering on Sands there, Derek, I think one of the main, one of the factors why he's not... Um, maybe played is that Beal wants to work long term and if Rangers aren't going to sign Sands in the summer, then you have to question what is the benefit of him getting a run in the, the team, if you if you know, because he's not going to be here long term, whereas someone like Raskin is. Jack, I don't think you can rule it out because we know how much Beal likes him. He's come back to, to a good vein of form. On the opposite side, Jack's in this discussion for a reason. He was asked about this at a recent press conference as well. and Yeah reiterated that he's just focused on playing and I, I I think you know it's not as if he's going to go and sign somewhere else until I, I think he knows a contract offer isn't there he'll want to stay um he want to stay at Rangers I guess that's one we have to wait until the end of the season to see seen some comments as well about Ridvan Yilmaz I don't think he's too far away now Derek obviously the initial diagnosis was 12 weeks at the end of October we're now at the start of February um so I can't do the maths on that but I think that means soon yeah, uh, three weeks or whatever uh, until he's uh, back, which uh, I'm looking forward to seeing him back in the Rangers jersey. I've got to admit, he was coming on to a game, I felt, uh, and what was a, a really uh, yeah. poor time for Rangers at, at the end of Giovanni yeah. van Bronckhorst's tenure. Uh, that being said, I, th I think Bonabarisic has done reasonably well, I've got to say. He's been, yeah. he's been solid enough. Um, but I just, I just want that competition, that, that left-back slot. And, and Yilmaz offer something completely different to Barisic, Joshua, doesn't he? The thing is, will he fit in that Michael Beale setup? Because he does like his uh, 
uh, his fullbacks to be out wide and, and deliver crosses. Uh, Yilmaz, uh, by all accounts, likes to come in field, doesn't he? But um, is he going to yeah. have to adapt his game, do you think? I, I think what we've seen with Beal so far, and <clears throat> I know I keep banging on about this, but um, what was really interesting to me when he came back was how is he going to make it different? Um, the piece that we wrote at the time, which was saying his main ob- um, obstacle isn't going to be experience. He has been around these first team environments for a long time. He's in this position for a reason, but it's proven that he's the future. It's proven that he's not just going to come back in and do what Rangers did towards the end of Steven Gerrard's time because that wasn't working very well. They needed to evolve. They needed to adapt. And I think what you've seen with that is a much more fluid system. There's still those recognisable traits. You're right, Derek, with the fullbacks going high and um, with freedom for the attacking players. But I think there's even more freedom for the attacking players kind of facilitated by the structure of, of the deep line midfielders. Um, and, and, and although the results haven't come, for example, I thought the first half of the, the weekend was some of the best football approach play that Rangers have played under Beal without rewarding themselves with um, with, with a goal. And, and I think what's been so impressive has been their off-ball movement. For me, the, the big issue with Gilles football was that it just didn't move teams about. And there's that famous, I think it's a Guardiola quote, which is about, um, I can't remember what it is off the top of my head, but it's about how you have to move the opponent to obviously create the space. Yeah, It was so static under Gio and under Beal. I think that fluidity and, and the unpredictability of the attacking player's position makes Rangers so unpredictable to, 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 to face. And I think Andy's comment here is absolutely right. Ridvan will play that role differently to Barisic. I don't think Rangers um, are crossing overly much, even when they're trying to break teams down. I've not looked at the numbers on that, but it'll be interesting to see. Barisic is slightly different because I think his the reason you want him in the team is for his crossing ability. So therefore... Rangers maybe often build up on the right and try and create space for him to, to cross into. Red Van gives you a complete other option. I think he can play by the touchline, but then maybe instead of always crossing, he he plays more of the, the kind of Zinchenko role from the touchline where he's a creator from yeah. out wide. He gives Rangers a completely different option, and, and that's what they need, Derek, because for too much of this season, they've not had competition. They've been so predictable in the way they've, they've played. And now if you're setting up to, to face Rangers tonight, you know roughly what they're going to do, but in a few key areas you don't. And and I think that's something that Beals reiterated is really important to remain unpredictable and uh, to not allow the, the team you're facing to know exactly what you're going to do. Yeah, uh, I just hope he's, he's back uh, soon so uh, Michael Beal does have another selection dilemma over on that left-hand side. Um, okay, folks, I think that will do us there. Thank you to everyone who's uh, interacted with the show as ever. It's greatly appreciated. Just a reminder, you can support us on our YouTube channel for totally free. It uh, won't cost you a penny. Uh, just hit the subscribe button. Uh, and I think if you click the bell, it means you'll never miss a video when we go live. Uh, and if you want to take advantage of the Rangers Review website itself, uh, just head over to rangersreview.co.uk forward slash subscribe to sign up. Uh, Joshua will be at Tyne Castle, as I mentioned earlier on. So we'll have uh, all the usual uh, pre-match uh, and post-match uh, videos coming your way. Stay tuned to the website and also our social media channels uh, for all the latest from Tyne Castle and what is sure to be a right firecracker uh, of a game it normally is. Um, Okay, that'll do us there. We'll speak to you a little later on. Bye for now.